Okay, so I just started. Uh, it's a new day. I just woke up earlier and I've been um, messing about with the uh, settings again <laughs> on the. I just want to show you how clear it comes out actually um, on my other my old phone. It's actually. I did notice though that my old phone gets pretty hot, so uh, it's using quite a lot of battery, but. Uh, Anyway, it's really windy at the moment, gusts of about 47 miles an hour, which is still too windy. You can probably hear the wind through my chimney occasionally. You can hear it gusting. When, when, whenever I hear the wind through my chimney, uh, you know, my gas fire, when I can hear the wind blowing through there, I know it's too windy. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, I, uh, I was thinking about the settings yesterday and I didn't check everything and I didn't check that one what was it oh right so that only works when it's flying so the menu option for the thingy I wanted to check the menu options because I haven't looked at them yet and obviously I can't look at them but the Google Maps um, works it's not zooming into me because it can't it hasn't got GPS at the moment but uh, yeah um i got yesterday i got a bunch of squiggly lines because it was hopping from one uh 4g network to another so um i just wanted to where's the settings thing gone there was a little box up here somewhere and it's disappeared oh is it that one oh right video resolution yeah only, oh good it's set for 2.7k 25 frames per second by default which is good because um, my phone, this phone, this one here that I'm actually using on this, the remote, it doesn't support 4K. Uh, it's got a lower resolution. Actually, I think it's 1080p I want to be on. So I set it to 1080p because I, I prefer, because this phone supports 1080p and it would, probably not like using 20, uh, 25 frames per second at 2.7k because this I know for a fact that this old phone only supports 1080p so I'm going to leave it on that one um, I'll set that to lower resolution as well so what else uh, I wanted to keep it at the, at the settings that the phone's happy with you know otherwise it'll just burn my battery out because uh, this old phone, it's uh, the battery is not very good on it. There was a menu at the top here, but I can't find it. It was like, oh, is that it? I can see it now. I think it's there. Ah, yeah, there we go. So I'm still on beginner mode. That's great. It's, it's remembered my settings. You know, when I set this return to home thing at 30, 30 meters, I uh, I was trying to work out how big, how tall the houses are around here, and I honestly don't think that. I think I need to go higher than that to be honest. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to go I just want to set the settings to a safe number so I'm going to set it to 50 meters I think. Um yeah. So So okay, so I've set it to 50 meters. I think cuz the house is uh, quite big the uh, let me think. 1 2 3 the four one two three three stories plus an attic so that's basically four stories if you count the actual roof area and i want to be safe i don't want to if ever i'm flying this at the front of the house i don't want to go i don't want to be under the wires i want to go over the wires and then come down sort of thing um height limit uh, um i think i think i need to set that one as well oh. I think I'll I think I'll set that to the same. All right. All right. Oh, I pressed that update. You can't use that because there's no GPS measurements at the moment. Um, so I, that won't work probably. Oh, it does. Give me a wheel sensitivity. Ah, so. Well, that's already done. It didn't. Interestingly, it didn't actually ask me to do recalibration for the compass and that, so it must have remembered that as well, which is cool because I know my cheap drone doesn't do that. My 
GD95 drone doesn't remember things and you've got to do it every time but this one seems to remember everything which is cool because it means I don't have to keep fighting about setting it all the time unless I move to a different location like <laughs> not likely I'm going to be moving around because I don't really travel much because of my health issues but um, yeah that's, I'm glad it remembers stuff alright what's that one for some beginner mode yeah that's what I was already on that's battery so I need to move my phone a bit so what's this one? Oh, that's the grid oh look it, you can find your aircraft as well if you lose it as long as you've got GPS um, if you've got GPS you can voice broadcast is set to on which is good yeah anyway I'll, I'll get out of those settings because that's all set right so all I'm doing right now is waiting to see if, um, if I can get the GPS satellites in the kitchen so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in the kitchen and move the drone around a bit hang on a minute uh, let me just move my keyboard out of the way uh, I need something to pop this on uh, let's see let me just move this oops I need to pop it on something so let me think what can I use it's not heavy right Oop, I don't want it to fall over. Right, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna leave. The I'm gonna keep filming a bit. Uh, oh my god, it's gone all blue for some reason. Let me just zoom in. I don't know why it's gone all blue. Maybe I want to be lower down. Yeah, that's better. Zoom out again. Right. Right, I'm just gonna go in the kitchen and move that around a bit because I want to get. I want to elevate the uh, landing pad higher up so that the drone can get, I hope they can get GPS satellites through the ceiling, the ceiling of the kitchen because the kitchen ceiling is only made out of uh, plasterboard, uh, wood and um, um, what do you call it, water, waterproof felt, it's like tar or something. <coughs> and, the signal should pass straight through that without any problem. There's no rebar or steel or mesh or anything like that in the roof. So anyway, I'm just going to go and mess up with that a minute. Right, the reason for lifting it up is um, I've got the washing machine underneath there and uh, there's also the uh, draining board which is metal so whenever you've got the drone near any metal services it tends to short, short circuit the GPS um, let's have a look see if we've got anything now oh shit it's white I can't see it I can't see it because it's all white hang on I'm going to go and turn it a bit more Oh, I hate the flipping uh, text. It's the wrong colour. It wants to be a different colour. It wants to be adaptive. The return point has been refreshed. Please pay attention to the position of the return point position mode.
Okay. Um, yeah, the text should be adaptive. Um, when I say adaptive, when there's a white background, the text should change black. And if, if the uh, background is white, so it is black, then the text should change black. So I'm sure there's somebody smart enough to, to do that coding to adapt the chat. Or it could have, um, the text could have a border around it. So it's multicolored, so it's, it's black and white, so that you could read it. You know, like um, certain types of fonts. Um, oh, I can't, still can't read it. Uh, yeah, it was better when it was hanging over this black area here where I've got my flycatcher, because that's black. I don't know how I can get to read that. There was some... An announcement. I heard the voice talk when I was coming back, so I don't know if it's if it's got satellites now. I don't know. I am going to hang something up over there. I'm going to go in the kitchen, hang a black bag or something, just so I can read the friggin' text. It's so tiny as well. Can't see it. Um, Environmental magnetic field interference is too large. Please pay attention to flight. Okay, I can't see what the camera... Oh, I think it's got it. I think it's got GPS. It says GPS mode. It's... I still can't see it, the text. I need to move the camera to the left. Oh! Hang on a minute, it's better easier if I take this remote with me, I can do it. Hang on a minute. I'll just pause you a sec. Okay, I went in the kitchen and uh, it says green, right? Well, the green light means that it's got GPS, right? It should do. Um, it's in altitude mode, which is not GPS. I was reading the um, manual. I... Uh, I printed out the whole manual in big A4 sheet. So, unfortunately, a lot of it didn't come out so well. This text here, it's all crap. You can barely read it, but this, I think I've got a blockage, either a blockage in my inkjet printer. So I'm going to have to print this out in the laser printer later on. So I'm going to have to print this out again on the laser printer, I think, because there's something on right with my inkjet. Um... Yeah, or the ink's a bit too... Um, or it could be that the text itself was so tiny. The, the actual manual that comes with it is so freaking tiny. When you expand the... Uh, when you scale it up, when you make the picture bigger, um, it loses its uh, quality. Uh, you know, scaled up images are never very good. And I seem to have lost some of the definition. So it's a problem with the actual original size was so tiny. Um, anyway, let me just try and zoom in to the phone so you can see the satellites. Now it says zero, right? Uh, it's right at the top there. Uh, satellites are zero. Um, 
as I say, the kitchen roof is quite thin, so we should be able to pick up some satellites through the ceiling, through the roof. But this is just me messing about, trying to learn about it, and I'm trying to I'm trying to familiarise myself with um, its functionality. But I will say one thing: it's got very qual good quality definition. You, as you can see, the it's not pixelated at all. It's a really good quality video. Um, it's stable. The gimbal works great. Obviously, we've got a bit of flicker on there because of the strobing effect of the LED lights in the uh, kitchen. But that's nothing because you won't get that when you're outdoors. But um, now I got it. I did get GPS satellite lock for a few seconds when I went in the kitchen before, but it seemed to have lost it again. I'm not sure why. Um, uh, it's probably the weather because, as I say, the weather's atrocious today. It's it's not good at all. I keep getting these messages on the screen. Let me just move over so you can read them. But so there's a satellite. It's a zero. It's it keeps nagging me. It keeps saying beginner mode. Uh, I don't know if you can read that, but it keeps on saying beginner mode is activated. Well, that's kind of silly that it keeps saying that all the time. Uh, obviously, if, if you're in beginner mode, you know. Because normally it says up here, normal mode, end mode. And it says ready to go, altitude mode. Well, altitude mode means that it's got no satellites. So it goes, it uses the sensors on the drone, like the, um, um, the, the optical floor camera in the belly. And it also uses the internal sensors rather than the GPS. So when you're in altitude mode, it can fly out of control. So I wouldn't fly it with that anyway. Uh, I would only fly with GPS. Um, but obviously, I am not going outside because it's cold. It's freezing. And I, my health condition with the moment with me, and my eyes being really irritated. They don't do well in cold. Um, you know, with a blepharitis problem I've got. So I'm not going to go outside and freeze my backside off and freeze my eyes out of the sockets. <laughs> um, I, I'm not worried about I'm not worried about running the battery down. I just I just wanted to see what it's like, um, the camera stuff and all that and the settings and. Uh, sorry, I don't mean to be pointing. I'm just looking. I'll try and get more in that screen. All right, so. I was hoping to see some satellites up here, just here. Well, still no satellites. Right. Okay, so I'm going to go and <coughs> move the camera, move the drone, sorry, into a different location. I'm going to see if that helps uh, in the kitchen. Right, so I just moved it on to the top of the draining board. Uh, now I can't see the satellites again. It's interesting how the gimbal slowly compensates for the image and it's slowly moving. <laughs> Even though it's not actually flying anywhere, it's just on the stand. Uh, anyway, I don't want this video to get too long. So I'm going to pause it and I'll, I'll, if I get satellites, I'll bring it back for a few minutes, for a minute or two, just to show you what I've got. So I'm waiting for satellites at the moment, but uh, I haven't even had a chance to start the motors up on this yet. Um, I would like to start the motors just to check them out, make sure they work. So that's the reason I'm waiting for satellites. I don't want to take off, not indoors. <laughs> I just, all I want to do is get satellites just just to check to see if the, everything is working, you know, the motors work and everything else. I'm not sure how to get the motor started when it's no GPS because I mean, as I say, I've set it to beginner mode, so it'll only take, it'll only activate in beginner mode when, when you got satellites. And uh, 
I suppose I could turn that off just to, briefly, just to check the motors out. But as I say, I haven't read all the manual yet. I haven't read it all. I need to print this out again. In um, I need to print this manual out because look at the text. It's pretty crap. It's hard to read it. There's, it's very very blocky. Some of it's impossible to read. Uh, I'll show you. What I mean. Oh. Right, so this page here, look, oh shit, ah, hang on, knocked everything over, right, hang on a minute, oh, uh, right, it's gone down to two bars now on the remote, hang on, no, not, right, look at this, uh, look at this text, right, where are we, right here, it's very, very, Function part of the ends missing. Um, it's <laughs> yeah, <sighs> difficult to read all of this. Uh, my, my poor eyes. Um, <sighs> so yeah, I'm gonna have to reprint this out on laser, I think. Um, uh, let's see. We've got a good signal on the remote control. The remote control is there. It says we've got good signal on the remote. Battery on the drone is 79%. Why can't they do that? Why can't they use those particular type of icons for everything on here? Because it's easy to read that with the black background, uh, with the right white writing over it. But these other icons, they're very, very hard to read. <sighs> So the that this message that comes up every now and then um, there it just says beginner mode is enabled. You can't obviously I was looking at the empty part of the bar, but that bar covers nearly half the screen, which is uh, kind of overkill really. It's showing up more than what you want really. Um, why well, can't they have those background little grey areas behind the text on the um, um, you know, behind the satellite icons and the battery icon, and then you'll be able to read that easier. You know, it's I don't know if they're going to do that later on. Maybe it's just the app that wants updating. I think oh, I just moved it again. Um, still no GPS lock, but I, at least I got the blue part. In the background now so we can see the um, icons a bit better with the black blue background uh yeah um so i'm waiting and waiting <laughs> i'm not worried i've you know i've got nothing else to do at the moment i've been watching some videos but i finished just watching um outlander again uh kind of gruesome in parts but it's a good story uh right so just going to wait until the battery tells me it needs to uh, be turned off or something. Well, I, I, I kind of miss the display that we have on the GD95 drone. Uh, because on the GD95 drone, there's a quite a strong, powerful LED uh, display um, on the remote. Uh, when you pull the things out, you can... Um, well, I think it's actually already there, all, there all the time. But yeah, you can see the um, some in, some stuff on the uh, little display on the GD95, um, which is quite bright and easy to see. Um, but on the this phone, right? When I if I'm outside in the sunshine, this phone is basically un unreadable. I can't read it. I mean, when I mean I can't read it, I mean it's not just the text size that's too small. The actual phone is just not bright enough in the sun. You can't see it at all. It's just completely whited out by the sunshine. So I actually want me to read the screen when I'm outdoors. And if it's sunshine, it's bright sunshine. So it'll be useless, the actual phone. It's only good for doing videos on, really. Um, I mean, even my new phone, uh, the one I'm videoing at the mo on at the moment, isn't that bright. 
So most phones you just can't see, um, even in the settings if you turn the brightness right up. Uh, it, they're very hard to see in the sunshine. So I don't know if I'll be flying much in the bright sunshine. I'll probably be flying more uh, in twilight. I think it's better in the twilight, uh, you know, early morning or evening, just before it gets dark, the sort of thing, because then you can see um, the phone more easily. And uh, it kind of leaves you a little bit naked, if you know what I mean. A little bit um, short of information when you can't read the display on the phone. And um, you, you've got to learn how to recognise the, the the beeps and the... I, I suppose that one good thing is these, at least these LEDs tell you. Because if the LEDs um bright on the phone, on here, it's got these... Um, got these led indicators and when that's bright green it's supposed to in indicate you've got gps well uh, we haven't so uh, i was reading the manual and um the oh look we've got eight satellites <laughs> okay well, look at that uh we've got eight satellites look at that cool well, eight satellites right now uh not enough though that's enough to, that's not enough to fly but yeah at least we've got Eight satellites. Um, can I actually turn the motors over? That's the question. <laughs> I'm going to have to pause this video and just look at the manual, see how you start the motors up, because I don't even know how you do that yet. <laughs> so apparently on page 36, it says in the manual, um, it says how to unlock. Uh, long press the power switch for two seconds, turn on the power of the remote controller. Oh, where are we? Where do you unlock it? Oh. Um, Brand new aircraft must be activated through. I already did that. Please turn on the aircraft, blah, blah, blah. Give a slight position. Give a status icon of the aircraft on the upper right corner of the status bar at the top of the app. Oh, so it's on the app itself. Okay. Um... I don't want to take off. I don't want to press that button. Uh, hang on. I don't want to press that button because that's, I think that's one button take off. And that's return to home. So how the hell do you unlock it? I can't find it in the manual. I'm looking at the moment. Um, oh, oh, we've got five satellites. He's dropping them. Um, when the aircraft status indicator is steady green, it means that the GPS successfully positioned um, and the aircraft can take take off safely. Um, right, it doesn't tell me how to how to just spin up the rotors without taking off. I'm just trying to figure that out. Um, yeah. I'm going to have to pause again because this video is getting too long. Okay, so I, I found it in the manual. Manual activation of motors is, um, hang on, the joysticks, you push the joysticks, left, left joystick. Oh, shit. Ah, everything's falling over here. You push the left and right joysticks outward. Ah. Everything keeps falling over. <laughs> you uh, do that to activate. Well, I've got no satellites again. So, yeah, it's back to zero. So, yeah, I'm not going to do that right now. I'm too accident pro. <laughs> keep knocking things over. Um, at least I know now. So, you toggle the left and right joysticks outward. Okay, so that's how you activate the motors. Well, I don't want to do that while I'm in here because I can't see the drone and I want to be near it when I do that. And uh, I assume that you do that again to deactivate them, hopefully. Um, yeah, there's not enough information on the internet. There's loads of people making YouTube videos, but they don't actually show you... Um, I haven't seen any videos yet of how you actually activate the motors on this drone and deactivate this drone. Um, I'll have to go and check again because I might have missed something. 
anyway that's that's all for now because this oh look we've got seven satellites again <laughs> yeah as i say it's too erratic at the moment it's on and off um so that was all i wanted to do was just make sure we could pick up some satellites well obviously the weather's terrible at the moment the signals are varying too much and um it's not good to fly today with the gust gusty winds so thanks for watching at least we uh at least i've managed to figure some stuff out because i didn't know how to activate the motors now i do um some drones are different to others um obviously once you activate um I don't want to knock that thing over again. Once you activate, you use that the right, is it the right or the left uh, joystick to? You, anyway, you push the bottle up to take off. Well, I don't want to do that yet. Um, I'm not going to fly indoors. This is this this drone's too too nice to break indoors. I don't want to fly into some furniture. There's no obstacle avoidance at all. So, yeah, I'm not going to risk it indoors. I want to wait until I've got a good GPS outdoors when the weather's good. Um, I know some people are out there who will fly in windy conditions, but look, uh, I'm not. <clears throat> I'm a. I consider myself proficient in flying stuff in simulators, but I'm a bit of a novice when it comes to flying these drones. To be honest with you, because uh, it's uh, it's not quite the same. When, because you, when you're flying in real life, you risk not life and limb, but property. Really, you risk damaging it, and uh, I just don't want to risk it. Um, not when I've just got it. I want to make sure the weather conditions are ideal for me to play around with it. And uh, I also want to be, I probably want to be at the front of the front of the, the building, away from the clotheslines and all that shit, you know, because there's, there's trees and stuff on the back. And yeah, clotheslines. And I don't want to accidentally bump into any of that stuff. Um, and plus it's a bit shaded around the back. The satellites aren't ideal at the moment. Uh, there's too many buildings around here. Um, anyway, th thanks for watching. Bye for now.